In this video, we're going to take a look at playing cards, namely poker. And if you have five card stud, what is the probability of you getting no cards of the same rank? In other words, no pairs. That's what we're going to investigate today on High Peak Education. What's going on, everybody? Thank you very much for joining us. This one is very relevant for those of you that want to go to Las Vegas or maybe Atlantic City. And what I wanted to do is give you this opportunity to know how to calculate probabilities using statistics from a discrete mathematics class. We're going to be using the combination. Combination is an important statistical calculation which calculates number of ways something can be done. So let's go ahead and get into today's video. It's almost like my brain turns off and like, oh, it seems like there's, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> right. But see, that's just it. Like, remember when we were doing the um, problem last week with the filling the water in the buckets? Yeah. It's an application problem, but do you understand that like, math makes things more general. Like, it might not necessarily be buckets, it might be arrays. And it might not be water, it might be data points. But the thing is, math allows us to generalize things. You know, specific example problems are, again, they're specific, and it's good to do those. But it's also good to understand the general principle. So that's actually what we're gonna do on this problem. On this problem, I almost want us to think more about like the number of cards and the number of suits more so than cards themselves. Because if you reframe the problem, I think it'll actually make some more sense, okay? I remember, we're, we're in Las Vegas again. I remember when I was a kid, like, the commercials would always say, always on the money, Las Vegas. <laughs> okay, so we're in Las Vegas again. Consider a standard deck of 52 cards, 13 possible ranks. Okay, so ace and then two through 10, jack, queen, king. Four different suits. So we've got spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. That's very traditional. A single hand of 52 cards is dealt. Now a single hand is traditionally five cards, like it says there. What's the probability that the five cards are all of different ranks? Now different ranks means you don't have a pair. And think about this. You might have a flush, which would be like, say like you had two, four, six, eight, ten, all of hearts. Now, by the way, a flush in Las Vegas, that's a pretty good hand. Like, that's like a decent probability to win. So you should hold on to that. But like, let's just, and by the way, let's assume if, if we, uh, here's the other way to think about this. What's the game here? The game, if you actually want to talk about actual card games, is this is what we would call five card stud, right? Five card stud which is like, you don't draw, right? You just, somebody deals you five cards, you stay with those five cards. So again, sometimes relating what you're doing to um, the situation at hand helps you to crystallize it more, okay? We're just restating the problem. So another way to state the problem, sometimes helpful is, how many five card hands will have no pairs? So how many five card hands from a 52 card deck randomly drawn to you are gonna have no pairs, okay? By the way, you can have things on suit or off suit. Nobody cares about that, we want no pairs. Now, here's the deal. I recommend you start off easy. One thing we know, and again, let me uh, say this, for sure, right, <laughs> is that we immediately, and in most cases, more easily know what the denominator should be because the denominator is just the total number of ways so we ask the question if you have 52 cards and you're going to are cards possible and then you get five dealt to you what's the total number of ways you can get five cards well it's just going to be 52 choose five right so I actually wrote it in words here, right? How many ways can you choose five things from 52 things when it only matters which items you chose, right? The order doesn't matter, just the data matters, right? You could reorder them in your hand, nobody cares. In fact, that's not a good idea, right? If you start organizing them in your hand, that's not being like a poker face, right? Because 
people are like, oh, you know, because if you start reordering them in your hand, people think that you want to see them to look nice. So that's a bad strategy when you play cards. Okay. If you've ever watched the, there's a movie from the 90s called uh, Maverick, but it has uh, Mel Gibson in it, okay? So in one of the high games at the end of the movie, his adversary reorders his cards and Maverick knows that like he's got a good hand. So Maverick was able to like bet right and, and so on, okay? You see what I'm saying? Like now, if you're playing with family, that's one thing, especially if you do it under the table. But in Las Vegas, you have to keep your cards on the top and you don't want to reorder them because then people will know you have a good hand. Okay, and in, in any case, there you go. So um, again, you can reorder them, nobody cares. We just really care which cards we got, okay? Um, so anyway, there you go. Now, by the way, if you actually work that out on your calculator, it's 2 million, almost 600,000 ways. <laughs> okay, so that's just, that's a total number of poker hands, five card stud. Now, let's be a little more specific. If we're going to be a little more specific, we must think about the numerator. So next, we want to count the number of ways that five cards can be dealt to produce a hand that does not have any pairs. So it requires six independent choices. And again, six things have to be true, or at least there's six parts to it. Okay, so let's do part one, four, five, six. There's six parts we have to obey. This first part is by far the most important. The most important part is we can't match any cards, right? Like we can't match rank. We can't have two twos or two jacks or two nines, okay, anything like that. So if you think about it, let's just imagine that we have a rank, right? So a, there's 13 ranks. That's because 52 divided by 13 is four because there's four suits. So there's 13 ranks. Since there's 13 ranks, choose a rank of each card in the hand. Okay, so let's just imagine they're all hearts for a second. Okay, let's imagine I got a flush of hearts. But if I got a flush of hearts, again, maybe I want the two, four, six, eight, ten, which is, again, not no pairs. Since there are no pairs, none of the cards have equal ranks, we choose five ranks from a set of 13 ranks. So what we do is we choose, if we have 13, choose five. And now that I say that, that probably seems relatively intuitive, but make sure you understand that, right? If you've got 13 cards, but you don't want to choose any of the same card, what's the number of ways you can do that? Well, it's 13, choose five, right? That's the number of ways, again, of, just, let's just say we're in the hearts. If we're just in the hearts, how many ways can you choose uh, five cards from 13? Then what we have to do is, then we have to say, okay, now let's deal with the suits, okay? And the suits, again, um, I'm calling it suits, but uh, yeah, well, the suits are, again, hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades, okay? So now we have to deal with the suits. Choose a suit for the first card. There are four suits, but we're only gonna choose one of them. So the number of ways you can do this is four, choose one. Now, by the way, we've done that earlier today. Four, choose one. That's like N, choose one, it's just N, right? So you just get four. Now choose a suit for the second card. Now think about this, right? If we did 13 choose five before, that was step one. That was the total number of ways, let's just imagine if they were all hearts, right? But then the idea is this, they don't also necessarily all have to be hearts. They could be any of the suits we want. So there's actually four ways to get that first card set up. There's four ways to get that second card set, set up. There's four ways and then so on, right? That's why I say here and repeat, right? So I've got it written down here for you. It's basically more or less copying and pasting the same text, right? The only thing we change is first card, second card, third card, fourth card, fifth card. 
And then again, it's still four suits and it's always four choose one. So it's gonna be four ways, four ways, four ways, four ways, four ways, right? Okay, now we just gotta combine all this. Now we've thought about our numerator and we've thought about our denominator. The number of ways to produce a hand with no pairs is equal to the product of the number of ways to make each independent choice. So again, 13 choose five, which is by far the biggest number. That's the number of ways you can choose. Um, and by the way, part of the reason if you just think about hearts and you just choose five cards is no two numbers are repeated in the hearts, right? There's only one two of hearts. There's only one three of hearts. There's only one four of hearts. So that's why we know this number is correct. It's because just imagine you're in one single suit. So we do 13 choose five, but then we know there's five slots. It could be any suit. So it's 1287 times four times four times four times four times four times four to the fifth power, right? So you get a very big number, a little over 1.3 million. And you just do that 1.3 million number, 1,317,888 divided by 2,598,960, and you get this number, which is a little bit above 50%. So the bottom line is this. When you play poker, stud poker, you just dealt five cards, you don't draw, um, players get a hand without pairs about half the time, okay? And by the way, I learned to play poker from my uncle, Steven. And one of the things he used to tell me is, even if you're playing draw poker, he's like, look, he's like, when you first get your hand drawn, if you have a pair, always hold it. <laughs> and I understand what he means now after doing this problem. It's because you're actually gonna get it about half the time or less than half the time. So if you think about it, let's say you're playing five card draw. Let's say you have, um, two threes and then you have like a six seven nine that are like all off suited you want to hold on to those threes because if you turn in those other three cards you could either get a full house if you get lucky or you could get three threes or you could get like two threes and two sixes you know but those are all pretty good hands the thing is like whenever you get a pair it's not rare but it's not doesn't happen it happens a little bit less than half the time you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's just kind of just some card playing uh, strategy. So. Cool. Okay. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So so by the way, um, one more thing to say. Uh, this doesn't mean half of your hands are going to be crappy. Like generally, if you don't have a pair, you usually say, "Oh, my hand is crappy." But again, we're excluding things like a flush. A flush is actually a good hand in poker. So a flush is, again, all five cards, same suit, right? Now you can calculate the probability of that as well, but we're not gonna do that. That'll take more time, okay? So as we saw, we can calculate the number of ways using the combination function. And by the way, if you've not worked with combinations yet, don't worry, in a discrete math class or perhaps a statistics class for sure, you should probably see the combination because we ask how many ways can we choose, the order does not matter, are things from n items. That's why it's always n choose r. And that's why we use this so many times over and over again, because it only mattered the cards that we got when playing poker, not the order that we obtained them. And so now you understand how to calculate various poker hands, and you're now empowered to do lots of things and do well in poker. So thank you for watching High Peak Education. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this content. Please subscribe to the channel to grow the channel. I look forward to reading your comments below. Let us know how you're gonna use this in your day-to-day -day life. If you're gonna try to make some money or whatever playing poker, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to know how this video has benefited you. Social media links are down in the description below. Please support us on Patreon and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.